Today, we're having a look at how we set up the post-processing package, so that's the post-processing stack version 2, and we also did a transition in between two different profiles. So over here, I'm running a global profile, which is why you see things a little bit yellow. As I enter this box, we now enter with a nice little bloom effect, and we can head right inside of the portal. So that's what we'll be having a look at today, guys. And uh, without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so we've got a starting scene over here. It's not something I've made, it's something that I've grabbed on the asset store. It's the first link in the description down below if you wanna do the same thing. Um, however, you know, we recommend that you have a scene before going into this video because, you know, what are you gonna be testing your post process against? You need something to view, like you need something visual. Um, yeah, so as I mentioned, first link in the description down below if you'd like to get this one. Now, um, if we head over to the package manager at the top over here, we'll have to make sure we include the post-processing package, which is, again, it's not the way we used to do things before, but now with Unity 2018.3 and beyond, now that we have the package manager, this is actually a package. So go ahead, oh, it says over here, yeah, it's the version two. So go ahead and install this package. Awesome, so now we have the package installed. What we can do is head over to your project folder, anything really, right-click, create, and you're going to be creating a post-processing profile. Now, let me explain to you what this is. This is like a package of post-processing effect that you're going to be using at a certain area in your game or throughout the whole game. It's really depending on, on where you want to apply this. Let me um, give you a quick example with words. Assuming you're going from one zone that is like dark, it's like, you know, it's a little bit ghosty, it's like a cemetery. You can do post-processing over there that does color grading, that changes the color, that add fog, that add depth of field. And then just next to that cemetery, there's like a happy little forest. Well, you can have a post-processing profile for the cemetery and another one for the forest, and you would be swapping in between those two. So this is what a post-processing uh, profile is. So for this one, I call it the portal scene. And if we have like another scene, we can create something else with different ambience. So what do we do now? On the right-hand side, you're going to find out that there is a lot of things you can add if you do add effect. You have a bunch of already predefined post-processing that has been made for you. Um, I think that you can add on top of that, you can create your own through shaders, but I'm not going to get into that today. So, okay, let's do a test that's gonna be easy to see, a bloom. So a bloom usually is the easiest thing to see because it just, it pops up in your face. So when you've added this thing, go ahead and make sure you check it to enable it. And then beneath that, go ahead and add a little bit of intensity, threshold, you know, I'm just gonna put in some um, random value here so I'm 100% sure that I will see the difference when I enable it. Now that we have our profile, right in our project folder, it's recommended to create an empty game object that's going to hold that profile. Actually, it's going to hold the post-processing volume, they call it. So go ahead and create yourself a new um, object that's empty and add a post-processing volume to it. You're going to drag and drop your profile in here and um, in our case, we're going to make this one global. As I've mentioned, if you have like two different profile for the same scene, you have like the cemetery, you have the happy forest, um, you don't wanna be making this one global. Instead, it's going to change based on your camera. Um, but right now, this one's going to affect the whole scene. So let's go ahead and put this one on global. Now, another thing that's really important to do for this to work is to switch the layer to post-processing at the top over here. And um, this should have been created on on their own so you should have this layer now and if you don't just go ahead and create it manually it doesn't matter if it's you or if it's them that created um, but I'm just letting you know that it was already there so with our volume set up we are now going to head right on our camera the main camera the one that's gonna be reading this um, post-processing stack and and will be applying it to its image it's getting we're gonna go right on that one and add a post process layer so on the right hand side over here in this new component, you're going to have a couple of fields you can have a look at, a couple of customization. What you're interested in to see the effect right away is to switch this layer. Right now, it's applied on, on nothing. If you put that on everything, you will be seeing your effect. However, that's not what you want to do. It says right here, it's a warning that says it's really not optimal to do things that way. Instead, you're only going to go on the layer that you have on your volume, which is going to do, give you the same exact effect. So as you can see over here, we have layer post processing, which is the same layer as this object. And it's applying the bloom. Now, um, 
The first time I did this, I didn't think it did anything because Bloom was not showing up. So if you're not having any changes, go ahead and play with the threshold. Mine was a little bit too high, so I didn't see. But as you go beneath in the threshold, you're going to see it's quite evident that, you know, it's changing my scene. Um, okay, so here's what I'll do, because I want to show you something before I move on to playing around with the effects. This is a global one. It affects everything. However, what we could do is not turn not turn into a global one. Instead, we could have a collider. So let me go ahead and on this object, I want to add myself a collider, say a box collider, normal one. And where is this thing? It's going to be right on top of my portal object. So I'm going to go ahead. And as you can see, it's like it's highlighted green, which means yo, it's, it's different than the normal collider. Um, this is going to be your volume. This is going to be your post processing volume which means if we run this right now with our camera, we press on play, you're not going to see any changes, but if we drag this camera inside of the post-processing, right away, as soon as we enter this thing, we're applying our new effects. So if you want to go with what I said earlier with the graveyard and the happy forest thing, you would have a big box like that surrounding your graveyard, and then as you walk inside of it, it would shift. Now, um, of course, this one has a very bad... <laughs> very bad way. Maybe you want to do a blend distance of say, um, say three meter and you'll see that the box just get, well, it's definitely more than three meter, but because I played with the size, but yeah, as you can see, we have a lot of room now to um, transition properly. So if we go here, uh, you see that as you get closer to it, okay, the distance are quite bad, but as you get closer to it, it starts um, putting more weight on the post-processing profile. Actually, since I'm right in here, let me go ahead and try to do something that looks somewhat decent. There we go. It makes a little bit more sense now. Okay. From this point on, I'll just go over some effects and I'll also let you know a little bit of what I think about them. But, you know, you're encouraged to do that yourself and you're encouraged to test out things that look good in your scene. Um, let's have a look at ambient occlusion. So ambient occlusion is adding like shadows in between the mesh itself. So if we have like little cracks over here, we can add shadow like here, like on the edge by adding ambient occlusion. So if we turn that to um, something that works with my lighting mode, you'll see that we're able to add like shadows in between those little cracks over here. And that, that's what ambient occlusion does. It's, it's creating ambient occlusion. Um, generally, you're gonna get a feeling that everything's a little bit more dark, but you're gonna hide a lot of those seams. So if you see over here, maybe it doesn't look like that good, but if you had a lot of Shadow, you can see that, hey, it's starting to look very good. And mid occlusion is an, an expensive operation though. It's not something that you should be taking in if your game is, is already lagging. Um, but you know, I'll let you decide that. And I find that if I remove, like if I reduce the radius and I up the intensity, I get the, the kind of effect I like in video game. Now let's keep going with some of the effect I know. Um, Auto exposure, I'm not familiar with it. Bloom, we just had a quick look at it. it. It just gives you a bloom effect and you can up the threshold quite a bit. Um, usually this is fun to use in a very short frame. I remember I used it for the game jam. It's it's not something that I had on all the time. It's something that I'd had while an explosion was going on. So if there's an explosion, you want to do like a nice bloom effect that lasts less than one second. Color grading. This is the equivalent of doing color correction for your scene afterward. So um, right now I'm under gamma. I shouldn't be under gamma. So let me go and switch that real quick. Here we go. So with color grading, what you want to do is really give a feeling to your scene, a certain feeling. If you want your scene to be a little bit warmer, if you, seen, if you want your scene to be a little bit more cold, you can play around with those color by giving it, say, um, we can lift this up and give it like a more of a cold feeling. Now, I'm not an expert. I just know that I use these tool and I try to do my best, but obviously, you can see me failing quite good right now. <laughs> um, but you can play around with this quite a lot to give the, yourself the feeling. And what's really cool with that is if you have two different volumes, like, like we mentioned, you can play around with um, one volume that gives you a certain feeling. And as you walk into a new place in your scene, you can have a whole different volume by just changing the color. You don't even have to change more than that. I would love to let you know a little bit more about color theory, but it's not something I'm really good at. So I will not bother you with my my fake knowledge of the thing. Instead, of course, I encourage you to have a look at these and play with them quite a lot. Depth of field is something I think a lot of you guys are familiar with. The next up we can have a look at is um, grain. Grain is 
again, very simple. It just is going to grain up your picture like if you were taking a, a picture in a dark environment to some extent on your phone or something that doesn't have like the best um, ISO quality. So that is grain. Next up, we can go with motion blur. Okay, so motion blur is really interesting um, because it has to do with the movement of that camera. So as we move, I don't know if you can see it because the video is probably not 60 frame, but um, if we up that a little bit more, you're going to see that as we move fast, there's like a little bit of blur going on. There's a little bit, I encourage you to test it out on your, on your scene because it's a very interesting effect that I personally really, really hate because when I do play a game, I want to try and play something competitive, like a competitive shooter or something like, uh, say, Apex. And if you add that when I move my camera fast and I don't see the units, like the enemy properly, I get pissed. But I understand why it exists and I think it's quite a cool effect, to be honest. Um, just don't put it in FPS, come on. All right, <laughs> going on to the next one. Screen space reflection, I am not so familiar with. Uh, vignette is, as it sounds, you can just add a nice contour to your screen. You see that a lot in video games where so your health is going down and as you go down, you change a vignette color, which I can't do right now for some reason, this is bug, but this would be red and you would maybe flash it out like a little bit like that. Um, oh, this is why it didn't work. So you could do something like that as you're dying and like maybe play around with this value as you're dying. And for those of you who are a little bit older, you can reproduce the James Bond intro with this, why not? So guys, this is actually where I'll be ending today's video. We had a nice little look at the uh, stack. I think the, the biggest thing you can take out of this is really the, the post-processing volume and how to give effect to certain spaces in your scene and how you can transition in between these. Um, the rest, how you will be setting up your post-processing profile for it to look good in your scene is of course Relative. So I will leave you guys with that. If you enjoyed the video, please leave it a like. If you want to see more, subscribe to the channel. If you want to support us on Patreon, and by us I mean me, you can support me on Patreon. Uh, first thing in the description down below. This package is not for download because it contains the asset of Fluff, which is maybe the first thing in the description down below. Um, you can have a look down there. You can, you'll be able to find it directly on the Unity Asset Store. So without anything else to say, I will see you tomorrow. Cheers.